What is up boys and girls? Welcome back to your Oracle Apex tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Apex on the Oracle Autonomous database. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be teaching you how to, you know, step up your game. Before we get into setting up the Autonomous database, we're going to take this video just to talk about what it is and why you might want to use this. Now this is within the bigger context of Apex, so this might not be the super deep dive of autonomous database if you're like a database engineer, right? We're just going for the basics here. So Oracle autonomous database, autonomous, got it. All right, so the autonomous database, it's not a new database, same database, but with some extra automation added in. So basically Oracle took AI machine learning put that as an additional layer on the database, and basically it makes our lives a lot easier if we're trying to use this database. So we don't have to worry about a lot of the stuff that we may have used to have to worry about in earlier editions of the database. Fortunately, it's super easy to get started with the autonomous database because you just open it up on the cloud, boom, there you go, you got a database running. But we also get that added benefit in that we're still in the cloud, we don't have to download anything, install anything, configure anything, nothing like that. We just start it and we're pretty much ready to go. Also the benefit is that there is a free trial and we only have to pay for what we really need to use. So you can kind of scale as your application grows versus buying all this hardware and installing the database on it directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Apex on the autonomous database and we're also going to talk about another tool called SQL Developer. SQL Developer is a tool we talked about a long, long, long time ago and now we're talking about it again because they just added the cloud offering of the software. SQL Developer Web, yeah. Basically this is another tool to work with our database and this might be a tool you're more likely to be using if you are more on the database side of the application development. So some things we can do inside of Apex, we can do SQL and stuff like that. But if you really want to get in there, do some data modeling or whatever else you want to do, you can do that inside of SQL Developer Web. So that's another tool you can use to your advantage to, you know, be awesome and like create good applications and whatnot. <laughs> so what is the autonomous database and why would we want to use it? Like I mentioned, it automates a lot of stuff so it saves us from having to worry about it. So when we're working with the autonomous database, there are two workload possibilities. There's transactional and then there's warehouse. So when would you want to use which one? So transactional is used when we are creating an application that's going to have a, a lot of statements being executed. Warehousing is more for data analytics when we want to look across a lot of our data and do really large select statements that basically aggregates data across numerous, numerous rows. So for what we're doing in this series, we are more interested in the transactional workload. That's what we're going to be using. So anytime you think of an application that's going to be doing essential CRUD statements, creating stuff, reading stuff, updating stuff, and deleting stuff, without an extreme focus on just reading, then the transactional workload is probably what you were looking for. There's going to be a lot of statements, but they might not be super huge statements. You might just insert one row, or you might delete one row, or whatever it might be. So the first primary things that are automated with the autonomous database, really simple, CPU and storage scaling. Nothing revolutionary, essentially your processing can scale and the storage needs can scale. This can be automatic, so for example, you might have six processors on your, your database instance and it can automatically scale up to three times that, so like 27. I'm kidding guys, I'm not stupid. If you got six processors, up to three times, that gives you up to 19 cores <laughs> without having to do anything. So personally, I think there are a lot of other services that might do similar things with the CPU and storage scaling. So maybe that's not the key differentiators, but there are a couple other things that might make the autonomous database a little bit more interesting. Oh, I don't have a shirt. When all else fails, use an eraser. Automatic patching, so anytime there's a security issue, those are going to be applied immediately and you don't have to worry about it. Next we have artificial intelligence powered performance enhancements. <laughs> so essentially somewhere in there, they're doing some AI machine learning stuff. So that'll help you get the best performance out of your queries. Another thing is with security, the AI is baked in here too as well because the database will automatically prevent any kind of inappropriate access to the database. They are pretty confident in the, the capabilities as well as the resiliency of this database, so much that you can get a service level agreement 
for the uptime of like 99.995%. So essentially you're building on a pretty solid trustworthy database. If you're doing mission critical stuff, the, the scalability is there and that you can scale your application and have the appropriate database to back it. So if you're doing some like serious stuff, you might want to consider the autonomous database. So what we're going to do now in the next video, we're going to be talking about how to set up the autonomous database and how to get Apex up and running. So it's going to be pretty cool. Please be sure to check it out and don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.